Faced with revolts in the German provinces and growing discontent amongst his supposedly loyal forces in Rome, the Emperor Galba tried to secure his rule by announcing his succession plan. However, in passing over Otho, Galba sealed his fate. A conspiracy arose amongst the Praetorians in support of Otho, and Galba was murdered on the 15th of January, 69. He had lived 73 years, and he was happier under the rule of others than in his own. Galba himself was of mediocre genius, being rather free from faults than possessing virtues. He was neither careless of reputation nor one who cared to boast of it. He seemed too great to be a subject so long as he was subject, and all would have agreed that he was equal to the imperial office if he had never held it. After his death, Galba's head was stuck on a pole, but after days of neglect and abuse, it was buried along with his body in Galba's private gardens on the Aurelian Way. Upon ascending the throne, Otho found that gaining power was a lot easier than keeping it. The rebel German legions that had precipitated Galba's murder had acclaimed their commander Vitellius as emperor. Failing to prevent the Vitellian entry into Italy, Otho rashly accepted battle before his Balkan reinforcements could arrive, and his advanced force was defeated at Vidriacum on 14th of April 69. Otho still had a formidable army to be bolstered by the approaching Dalmatian legions. However, rather than continue the damaging civil war, Otho took Pedriacum as a sign that the gods favored Vitellius. Despite entreaties from his soldiers, and against his dishonorable reputation as a companion of Nero, Otho committed suicide after encouraging his men to accept Vitellius as emperor. Although the goddess of civil warfare was still in doubt, and soft Otho had perhaps still a chance of winning, he renounced fighting that would have cost much blood, and with sure hand pierced right through his breast. By all means, let Cato in his life be greater than Caesar himself. In his death, was he greater than Otho? Vitellius might be more well known for his brief victory in the civil wars that racked the Roman Empire in the year AD 69, or even for his abdication and lynching in the streets of Rome following the defeat of his forces at the Second Battle of Badriacum, but perhaps his reputation has become more tied up with one of his vices, gluttony. He always made three meals a day, sometimes four, breakfast, dinner, and supper, and a drunken revel after all. This load of victuals he could well enough bear from a custom of frequently vomiting. The most famous was a set entertainment given him by his brother, at which, it is said, there were served up no less than two thousand choice fishes and seven thousand birds. At another feast, in a dish, there were tossed up together the livers of charfish, the brains of pheasants and peacocks, with the tongues of flamingos and the entrails of lampreys. He is not only a man of an insatiable appetite, but would gratify it likewise at unseasonable times and with any garbage that came in his way. His new realm having been ravaged by the civil wars of AD 69, the Emperor of Vespasian sought to restore its financial security by a series of new and renewed taxes. This gained him something of a reputation of extracting as much money as he could, even from what were considered disreputable sources. When his son Titus blamed him for even laying a tax upon urine, he applied to his nose a piece of the money he received in the first instalment and asked him if it stunk. And he replying no, and yet, he said, it is derived from urine. This exchange is thought to have originated the Latin proverb pecunia non olet, money does not smell, used today to highlight that the value of money is not affected by its origins. While he may not have invented such a tax, a vitigial urinae had been enacted under Nero, Vespasian came to be associated with it, with public urinals in modern France and Italy still named after him. <laughs>